Since the implementation of the Coast Guard Order Number、no. Three on June 15th, China's Coast Guard has been very active in the Taiwan Strait, using the pretense of law enforcement, but actually provoking Taiwan. On July 3rd, they drove away Taiwanese fishing boats operating near Kinmen. On July 4th, two Chinese Coast Guard ships went into the international waters of the Taiwan Strait and warned the Penghu registered Shengyuan Fu Number、no. Eight fishing boat. On June 5th, the Chinese Coast Guard ship numbered 14609 crossed the median line of the strait, approaching the eastern side of the Taiwan Strait. If it weren't for the timely arrival of Taiwan's Taichung ship to separate the Taiwanese fishing boat and the Coast Guard ship, who knows what might have happened? More outrageously, on July 2nd, the Kinmen registered. Dajin Man Number、no. Eighty Eight fishing boat was detained by Chinese Coast Guard ships while operating in Taiwan's historical operational area. The six crew members and the boat were all taken to Weito Port in Fujian, and they haven't been released yet. This isn't law enforcement; it's outright kidnapping. These incidents are far from simple fishing disputes. They're part of a larger struggle over law, sovereignty, and control between Taiwan and China. It's a message to the Taiwanese government that their fishermen and boats can be taken hostage at any time, especially in areas like Kinmen and Matsu, which are close to the mainland. On June 21st, China released a draft of the Taiwan Independence 22 provisions, which, if implemented, would make actions like promoting Taiwan's membership in international organizations or conducting official exchanges a serious crime punishable by life imprisonment, a term of more than 10 years, or even death. Considering that in the first half of this year, over 80 Taiwanese have been detained or harassed in China, the consequences could be more severe if the draft becomes law. These events may lead to public dissatisfaction with the Lai Ching-de administration in Taiwan, as people might blame the government for the tensions with the mainland. Even though the detention of the Da Jingman Number、no. Eighty Eight was due to fishing, there could still be political manipulation involved. China's tactic of using routine law enforcement to expand its jurisdiction and create accomplished facts isn't limited to Taiwan. Recently, they sent a Coast Guard fleet to patrol near the Daoyu Islands, frequently harassing Japanese fishing boats. In the South China Sea, it's even worse. On June 17th, Chinese Coast Guards threatened Filipino Special Forces with axes, injuring one soldier's thumb. This is blatant violence. A research fellow at Taiwan's National Policy Foundation, Chia Cheng, pointed out that China is trying to turn surrounding waters into internal seas through so-called law enforcement, gradually undermining existing rules of free navigation and creating new ones based on its interests. They use a combination of coast guard force and self-made laws to back their power. In response to China's rogue logic, neighboring countries are naturally opposed. The White House has stated that it is closely monitoring the situation. Miles Yu, director of the China Center at the Hudson Institute, advised Taiwan to act according to international law. He noted that China used to call the Taiwan Strait their red line, and U.S. warships couldn't pass through. However, during Trump's administration. U.S. naval vessels transited the strait 59 times under international law. Led by the U.S., warships from the U.K., Japan, Canada, Germany, and Italy followed suit. These actions have significantly strengthened the international status of the Taiwan Strait and protected Taiwan. Miles Yu emphasized that China's bullying tactics at sea aren't only affecting Taiwan. South Korea, Japan, the Philippines, and India have also faced significant trouble. Taiwan should firmly enforce its laws in its waters, but also actively collaborate with neighboring countries. The thing China fears most is a unified front against its actions. You cited an example of illegal fishing by China worldwide. When the U.S. recognized the issue as a serious threat to international interests, it quickly mobilized the U.N., holding special meetings with countries like Argentina, Brazil, and Japan to collectively pressure China. This made China very nervous, and they soon reduced their illegal activities. 
You also highlighted that countries should not be intimidated by China's bullying. He pointed to Indonesia's response in June 2016, when the Indonesian Navy fired warning shots at Chinese fishing boats illegally entering their waters. Instead of backing down, Indonesia clearly stated that expelling foreign fishing boats from their waters was rightful and lawful. This firm stance deterred Chinese fishing boats, and they have since avoided Indonesian waters. This shows that with China, you can't reason with them. Doing so only emboldens them. The best strategy is to take concrete actions that make them back off. Now let's talk about Kinmen. This small island group, with an area of only about 150 square kilometers, is just a few kilometers from Xiamen and mirrors the broader Taiwan Strait situation. On February 14th this year, a significant incident occurred in Kinmen's waters. A Chinese speedboat illegally fishing was driven away by Taiwan's coast guard. During the process, Chinese crew members jumped into the sea. Taiwanese coast guard members jumped in to rescue them, but tragically, two drowned and only two were saved. China accused Taiwan of murder. The Chinese government heavily publicized this, condemning Taiwan and threatening severe punishment. Interestingly, reports revealed that one of the deceased Chinese crew members was an active duty special forces officer who had recently appeared on a Chinese military TV program. Taiwan's intelligence assessed that the speedboat was likely a Chinese maritime militia vessel, and the crew's jump was a planned setup to lure Taiwan's patrol boats into a trap, accuse them of murder, and gain moral high ground to increase pressure on Taiwan. Taiwan saw through this ploy. Chiu Chuicheng, spokesperson for Taiwan's Mainland Affairs Council, firmly refuted this morning hall political show by China. He emphasized that under international maritime law, it's a basic humanitarian duty to rescue crew members overboard. Taiwanese Coast Guard members risked their lives to save the Chinese crew, and China's accusation of murder was utterly absurd. Following this, Chinese Coast Guard ships started frequently appearing near Kinmen. Openly provoking Taiwan sovereignty, on March 16th, they sent four Coast Guard ships into restricted waters around Kinmen, staying within Taiwan's territorial waters for over an hour. China's state-run Global Times falsely claimed that the Chinese Coast Guard broke through Kinmen's waters, asserting China's sovereignty over Taiwan, which was clearly a political intimidation tactic against Taiwan. On June 1st, China sent two naval supply ships into the restricted waters south of Kinmen, confronting Taiwanese Coast Guard ships for over 40 minutes. This was a blatant military provocation. On June 15th, China enacted the infamous Coast Guard Law, which authorizes its Coast Guard to board, inspect, and detain foreign vessels in its so-called jurisdictional waters. They can arrest violators. And impose administrative detentions of up to 60 days without any judicial process. This is nothing but lawless banditry, devoid of any legal principles. The outlying islands of Kinmen and Matsu, although unilaterally claimed by China as part of its territorial waters, have historically been under Taiwan's actual control. China's series of military intimidations and cross-border law enforcement are deliberate actions aimed at eroding Taiwan sovereignty and gradually turning the Taiwan Strait into its internal waters. By causing tensions in the Kinmen area, they intend to pressure Taiwan into submission. Whether Taiwan responds firmly or softly, China will continue to provoke. If Taiwan reacts strongly, China will accuse it of provocation. If Taiwan shows weakness, China will encroach further on its sovereignty. This is despicable and disgraceful. Against this backdrop, the recent detention of the Dajing Man Number、no. Eighty Eight fishing boat and its crew by the Chinese Coast Guard in the waters near Kinmen reveal their true intentions. They aim to create incidents to stir internal conflicts within Taiwan and pressure the newly inaugurated president Lai Qingde and his administration, forcing it into a dilemma between protecting sovereignty and ensuring people's livelihoods. However, the Taiwanese government is not to be underestimated. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Mainland Affairs Council, National Security Bureau, and Coast Guard Administration are all coordinating their efforts. Though they are keeping a low profile to avoid giving China any leverage, they are taking all necessary actions. The Coast Guard Administration immediately held a press conference to explain the incident and assured it would continue to protect the rights of the fishermen. 
The Mainland Affairs Council is working on rescuing the hostages and has requested that China release them as soon as possible and provide necessary medication for the captain, who has chronic illnesses. From a higher level, the National Security Bureau is analyzing the situation. Its leader, Tsai Ming-yen, stated in the legislative yuan that beyond the official Chinese claim that the Taiwanese fishing boat violated local fishing regulations, they are considering whether there are political motives. They suspect that China might be using this fishing detention and subsequent penalties to assert its control over the Taiwan Strait, weaken Taiwan's sovereignty, or pressure the Taiwanese government. Everyone knows that mere words won't work against such rogue behavior from China. In the future, Taiwan might need to adopt stronger measures, like enhancing the protection of fishing boats and even using force to expel intruding Chinese vessels. Additionally, Taiwan should strengthen cooperation with friendly countries like the U.S. and Japan, exposing China's rogue behavior internationally to isolate and contain it, making China realize that bullying Taiwan comes with consequences. Some analysts believe that China's unfriendly actions could benefit Lai Qingde by consolidating his 40% approval rating, which is sufficient for him to continue his policies despite a divided legislature. Therefore, Beijing's hardline stance against Taiwan might have limited impact on Lai's public support. A Taiwanese defense official admitted that while Taiwan currently holds a favorable military balance in the Taiwan Strait, the situation is changing, with China's People's Liberation Army enhancing its long-range operational capabilities and coordinating with Coast Guard and militia vessels Taiwan faces an increasing pressure to maintain nearshore security, especially with political and diplomatic constraints on Taiwan-U.S. military cooperation. Taiwan must rely more on its own capabilities to defend its maritime rights. National Security Council's Secretary General Wellington Koo suggested deploying unmanned sea and air equipment around the outer islands like Dongsha and Nansha to enhance surveillance and early warning against Chinese vessels before launching the East China Sea Number One project. Many members of the Democratic Progressive Party (DPP) advocate for Taiwan to further expand its international exchanges and counter China diplomatically. They also propose enhancing intelligence sharing with the U.S., Japan, Australia, and India, and conducting joint military exercises in sensitive areas like the South China Sea. The United States is Taiwan's most important ally, and Washington won't stand idly by amidst China's frequent provocations in the Taiwan Strait. According to Taiwan's National Security Bureau, the U.S. and Taiwan have established a comprehensive intelligence sharing mechanism. U.S. reconnaissance planes and drones monitor Chinese military activities in the Taiwan Strait, East China Sea, and South China Sea around the clock. If the People's Liberation Army makes any unusual moves, the U.S. will immediately inform Taiwan to help them prepare defensive measures. The American Institute in Taiwan (AIT) has also quietly revealed that to counter China's increasingly frequent gray zone activities at sea, the U.S. government has authorized the State Department and the Department of Defense to conduct feasibility studies with Taiwan on establishing maritime militia forces. If conditions are favorable, the U.S. might fund the recruitment of a maritime militia from among Taiwanese fishermen and retired military personnel. This militia would be equipped with weapons and collect intelligence during peacetime and coordinate with U.S. and Taiwanese forces in wartime to counter China's fishing militia. While these reports haven't been officially confirmed, Taiwanese public opinion generally sees this as a sign of deepening U.S.-Taiwan security cooperation. In December last year, the U.S. passed the National Defense Authorization Act, which explicitly aims to strengthen Taiwan's defense capabilities and enhance U.S.-Taiwan military cooperation. It establishes a legal basis for U.S. support defending Taiwan. In April this year, the U.S. and Taiwan held a classified military meeting to discuss strategies to counter China's anti-access area denial capabilities. All these developments suggest that China's military provocations in the Taiwan Strait are doomed to fail. Former Kuomintang legislator Lin Yufang stated that while cross-strait unification is a historical trend, it, it will be indefinitely postponed if China continues its aggressive actions without changing its approach. 
For the sake of survival and development, and for future generations, Taiwanese people must unite to defend their hard-won democracy and freedom. Lin urged all sectors in Taiwan to remain highly vigilant against China's unified front tactics, warning them not to be swayed by sweet talk or short-term benefits that could harm the nation's overall interests. Former Taiwan Defense Minister Tsai Ming-shen bluntly remarked that, in China's eyes, forceful unification of Taiwan is inevitable. From this perspective, if Taiwan wants to maintain its independence, it must be prepared to fight back at any time. Kinmen is critically important in the context of a Taiwan Strait conflict. Despite being only about 150 square kilometers and located just 10 kilometers from mainland China, it is undeniably part of the Republic of China's territory. The legal status of Taiwan as part of the Republic of China is less clear. The 1943 Cairo Declaration and the 1951 Treaty of San Francisco mention Taiwan, but neither explicitly assigned its sovereignty. Consequently, various countries have interpreted this issue differently over time. In October 1945, Chiang Kai-shek took over Taiwan, claiming it as a victory from World War II. The U.S. felt slighted by this assumption. Later, in 1949, when Chiang retreated to Taiwan after losing the Chinese Civil War, the U.S. considered occupying Taiwan, but ultimately decided to focus on Europe and Japan instead, allowing Chiang to seek refuge in Taiwan. In the eyes of Americans, Taiwan is like a prize they won from the Pacific War, similar to Guam. Regarding Kinmen and Matsu, which are legitimate territories of the Republic of China, the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, has attempted to seize them multiple times, but has always failed. In 1949, during the Battle of Kinmen, the CCP suffered heavy casualties, with over 9,000 soldiers killed or captured. When the Korean War started in 1950, the U.S. didn't hesitate to send aircraft carriers to the Taiwan Strait, warning the CCP that if they dared to attack Kinmen or Matsu, they would face direct action from the U.S. This led to an unspoken understanding that has lasted until now. Today, if the CCP really wanted to take Kinmen, it could do so quickly. However, this would mean an outright confrontation with the U.S., which they would want to avoid. Instead, they engage in minor provocations around Kinmen to stir internal conflicts within Taiwan. Kinmen is legally part of the Republic of China. If the CCP were to attack, it could be seen as a continuation of the Chinese Civil War, making it difficult for the U.S. to intervene directly. However, the U.S. is not idle. They are working to close this loophole. There are plans to expand the protection scope of the Taiwan Relations Act to include Kinmen and Matsu. In February this year, U.S. Special Forces instructors went to Kinmen to train the Taiwanese military in combat techniques, drone usage, and small-scale assaults. This clearly indicates that the U.S. is officially involving itself in Kinmen affairs. Previously, the CCP often cited UN Resolution 2758 to claim it represented Taiwan. Last July, the U.S. countered this narrative by passing the Taiwan International Solidarity Act, stating that Resolution 2758 only transferred the UN seat from the Republic of China to the People's Republic of China, but did not address Taiwan's status. The resolution didn't specify the relationship between the mainland and Taiwan. The U.S. is now correcting historical narratives. The Taiwan International Solidarity Act clarifies that Taiwan is independent, neither belonging to Chiang Kai-shek nor the CCP, but is a self-governing entity. This is a clear message to the world that Taiwan's status should be determined by its own people. This shift significantly impacts the Taiwan Strait situation. The U.S. might push for the establishment of a new international alliance and potentially establish formal diplomatic relations with Taiwan. Even the U.S. Embassy in China has changed its name from the Embassy of the United States in China to the Embassy of the United States to China, implying recognition of one China but acknowledging two separate governments. With these moves, the U.S. is increasingly siding with Taiwan. The passage of the Taiwan International Solidarity Act could fundamentally change the Taiwan Strait dynamics. The CCP won't accept this, and conflicts might arise. The recent detainment of Taiwanese fishermen by the Chinese Coast Guard in traditional fishing areas near Kinmen could be a precursor to such conflicts. 
However, the U.S. is determined to protect Taiwan, viewed as a war prize from World War II. This seemingly minor issue involving fishermen and coastal guards actually reflects a significant shift in the broader strategic landscape, indicating an intensifying struggle between the United States and China over Taiwan. As a result, the CCP resorts to rogue tactics.